favourite chant? Hmm. The way the crowd sounds all together. I'm known for starting a chant at away days. I think something where you can like, interact with a player. It's just got to be a classic. You dance. Cheering, like doing the ref. Two shits asking questions. It has to be singing You'll Never Walk Alone. It's like a spiritual experience. How did you get into football? I guess I was just born into it. I've always loved football. It kind of like runs in my blood. It wasn't really a choice. I got into football through my mum, through my dad. Dad taught me the whistle. <laughs> More and more women are gaining the respect that they deserve in football, but it's definitely proven to be a challenge. I'm Kitty. I'm Ema, and I support Liverpool. I support Fulham. I support Liverpool. I support Fulham. I think I was the only one female football fan when I was in school that followed football. I don't think there is a typical football fan, but I'm not wearing Stone Island and I don't have a beard, so that's a start. It's hard cover. You don't want to just target this at men. What do you know about football? Name some stats. Who do you fancy? Who's got the best legs? And you always get the question, oh, who's your favourite player? Sean Davis. Darren Freeman. Saka. Kenny Titi. Brian McBride. Karen Carney. Alan Goma. Tom Kearney. Eric Cantona. Bowie Kelly. But I guess it kind of is men. I know the offside rule, thank you. I spend my whole time explaining that women deserve a space in football. That we're all football fans at the end of the day. We are all one, we are all united and we are all Forest. Arsenal. Chelsea. Southampton. Fulham Football Club. Manchester United. Liverpool fan. The Irish team. Birmingham City fan. Arsenal. Manchester City fan. The Lionesses. AFC Wimbledon. Brentford supporter. Fulham FC. Arsenal. Fulham. Arsenal. And I support Fulham Football Club. I grew up during the ban, and my youth was already gone by the time the ban was lifted. And I've always resented that because you were just brought up to think football is nothing to do with women. And you get socialised into that. But I always resented it because I hated anything that I was not allowed to do, especially just because I was a girl. I always sit in row one. I've always sat in row one for all the years I've had a season ticket. But there is such a thing called the imposture syndrome, which means you're there and you, there's something about you that thinks, you know, I shouldn't be here. I'm not, go I'm not good enough. And that is something that sometimes comes into football that I have to fight against. I'm Mary Southgate, I support Fulham, and I've supported Fulham all my life. Well, I was born into it, really. I started going to Fulham matches when I was about six. I remember that match, we were playing Man United, and I was sitting in the Hammersmith end, and I was starting to fall asleep in the game, only because I was little. And then we scored. Papa Booba Diop scored an absolute screamer right in front of us, and that woke me straight up, because it was a brilliant goal. I was a mascot at Arsenal away once. One, two, three. Every year when the fixture list came out, we'd sit there and agree who would go to which games. And that's when me, my sister, and my brother used to rotate. If it was the one near your birthday, you were always allowed to go. But my sister was older, so she always went to like the big matches. Continue that sequence here tonight. I remember going to that one. Wolves, Man City, Brighton, Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest, Cardiff. These are some of the away matches that I've been to. Sandra Southgate, I'm a lifelong Fulham fan. Go to all the men's home matches, all the ladies' home matches, all the ladies' away matches and the majority of the men's away matches as well. So Saturdays and Sundays is pretty hectic during the football season. Went to Chelsea with my dad as well. Leicester City, 
Crystal yeah. Palace. Confident. <laughs> <laughs> I've got quite a few clappers, but I tend, if we lose, I tend to throw them away. But if it's a good match and we win, I keep them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this book of all cuttings. <laughs> 1976 was my first one. When George Best and Rodney Marsh played, that's when I first went with my dad. My first match, I was probably about six or seven. My dad took me when I was quite young, like a baby young. I was six years old. That was when I went to my first match, but Fulham's in my blood. Grew up in a household full of Arsenal supporters and I just went along with it. My family like it and they got me into it. I come from a very long line of proud Mancunians who are all City supporters. I've supported Fulham for about 30 years, but really since birth I didn't have a choice because my dad's always taken me. The fact that it's handed down, I'm a Fulham fan because my dad was, because my granddad was and because my great granddad was, so it's got that really nice sense of, of community with a club like Fulham. to lots of football matches with my mom, but one match I went to a stadium, but it was a woman's game, but only a fraction of the stadium was full. I don't think that's fair because men's usually get the whole stadium full or more. Mary Southgate is the captain of the women's team. She's just such a great role model. She works full time as a PE teacher and she also captains the, the women's team as well. What makes it extra special is she's a lifelong Fulham fan. So for her, she's like living her girl's dream. She's the first person really to be able to do that because for years, women weren't able to play football. And then when they were, you know, we didn't have a team at Fulham. <laughs> My name's Dean Rahman, 17, oh, and I play centre midfield. I mean, do you know, first of all, how do you feel about being like a pioneer of the whole women's professional football? Amazing. I mean, it's always been my dream to be a professional footballer. When I was little, I didn't really think it was going to happen because there weren't many girls playing, and, and I'm just so happy to be one of the first to be doing this and just looking up for women's football. We're really proud of what Mary brings to Fulham women. Playing for Fulham. I don't know how to describe that. It means a lot to me and my family. Done eight years now at the club. Couldn't ask for a better setup. Playing for the team and being captain of the team that I supported all my life and my family. My 100th appearance at Fulham. I've got one now that's being framed at the moment for 150. Um, in fact, I think this is, well, it is the shirt I'm wearing. Obviously, this one's the one I wear as a fan. I think I've finished this season now with 161 appearances. Everyone always sings a song that she's full of until she dies, because everyone knows it means a lot to me and my family. It definitely is growing. Female football is definitely growing. Last season, we played our first game at the Cottage in the women's team, and that was so special. That was the first time in years that the women's team had been at the Cottage. We had about 3,000, which obviously is not as many as the men's games, but that's fine. It just felt so weird to play on Craven Cottage because I've sat there since I was six watching them play, and then I'm now playing on that turf. But it was really nice. It was so smooth. <laughs> Grass was very well cut. There's females of all ages, which is good because it should be allowed for anyone to go and support a team. Our hopes to be inspiring the next generation. Lots of fans, like on TV, you see lots of men. It's good to see women. It just feels like encouraging for more girls to come to football matches because I think it's really good for different people to get into it. We play for Chelsea. You used to play football as well. On Tuesdays, I do training. In school, we used to play football in the playground, and I didn't have football boots, so I would just kick out my school shoes. <laughs> we used to have to go and play for the boys' team if we wanted to go and play football. We all had a team. We all loved football, and we all spoke about football. 
I think we actually had a lot of respect from the boys at school uh, just because of how well we did play. I got into football through my mum, so when I was like a young six-year-old, I was very shy, very nervous, and I think she was getting a bit worried, you know, wore glasses and wouldn't speak to anyone, so she got me down to my local football club to hopefully bring a bit of confidence out in me, and it, I'd say it sort of changed my life. I didn't have a lot of female friends that were into football. I always went with my dad and, and sometimes my sister came along, which was amazing. But typically, when you look around the stands, it's predominantly men. Football can be seen as very male-dominated and there's nothing better than being a woman, knowing your football and showing people that you can watch football as well. It's a huge chance for Fulham! He scored! Amazing! And their prayers were answered. I just never really thought hey, why isn't there many other females, or where are those females? I didn't question it. Because you're in that male-dominated world, you're not sitting there going, God, this is awful. Like, you really enjoy it. There's a reason you get involved in that male culture. Like, it's fun, it's really exciting, and the energy. You know you're a bit different and not on a match day because you see other females there you never felt like I'm the only one doing this but it was very uncommon to meet another female fan that you were like hey you, you love it in the same way that I do that's definitely been something that only recently with the lilies we've all become friends the lilies are a female and non-binary supporters group for fulham supporters we've got 10 board members all ranging from people in their mid-20s right the way up to somebody who's 80. We have always said that if it wasn't for fulham we, we don't think we'd actually even know each other because we're all very different backgrounds I'm one of the original co-founders for The Lilies. Uh, we founded in 2022. And we were kind of plucked, <laughs> I think is a fair way to say it. I was approached by Sarah to join The Lilies. Their mission was to make football more accessible for everyone. We really wanted to get a group of women together to try and elevate the game for females and have a voice for females. She got in touch via mutual friends and said she wanted to start a female supporters group. We all embody Fulham and we just want to give other people that safe space to go to go to Fulham games. It's just the most amazing group of women that I know I wouldn't have met if we if we hadn't had this community. Initially, we were just the board, so the, the 10 of us would meet on a monthly basis and we would discuss issues that we'd become aware of. One of the things that we got feedback from was that people didn't feel that they could attend football matches on their own. So we hold meetups before most home games at the Tea House in Bishop's Park. It's an opportunity for women to come along and chat to other women about football. We use the Tea House because it's family friendly and there's a park just opposite it. So if people want to come along with kids, the kids can go off and play in the playground. And then about half hour, 45 minutes before kickoff, we all walk to the ground together. All right, yeah. right let's do it again. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brilliant! Oh, that's a really good photo as well. So that's Jay Stansfield. So he's currently on loan, but we're hoping that he comes back next season. He's like one of the top scorers in the championship at the moment. Couldn't believe that we saw him. So, yeah, it's great. We need to also do more research into why female fans aren't coming because I think a lot of the time data is centred around men and male fans, which means we're not including certain 
diverse viewpoints. And that goes for more than just gender. That goes also for ethnicity, ability. So these are all things that need to be researched because we are different to men, and that's OK. I think you have to prove you're a football fan as a female. I can kind of liken it to the same way that when you wear a band T-shirt and someone says to you, prove that you're a fan. I bet you don't even know the offside rule. Men especially try and put you down, or they're like, get back in the kitchen, and you're like... Name a player in a starting 11. Do you even know what you're talking about? Are you here to watch just the men? Are you fancying them? And I do know what the offside rule is. <laughs> Very well, probably better than you. I can explain it. It doesn't trouble me. You know, people doubting just because I'm a woman. Multiple male friends try to mansplain to me. I do get questioned a lot, but I do enjoy shutting them down. And then my response is usually, where's your season ticket? I just don't think that you can attend a football match and not get swept up in the atmosphere. It's electric. There's nothing better than a goal going in the back of the net. The crowd screaming, feeling united. The exhilaration. Magical. The camaraderie. Competitiveness. And I like the fact that you can talk to everyone around you because there's a common interest about what's going on. When well, someone says, why do you like going to football so much? I love the game. The anticipation, the going in, the crowds. The atmosphere in the stadium is exciting. You just don't get that feeling very often. I liken it to if you've got a favourite band, they tour every three years, four years, you can go and see them. But if you've got a favourite football team and you're a season ticket holder, you can go every week. I just love it. Love it. <laughs> Our first game in the Premier League was against Arsenal at home. We won against Arsenal. We're a tiny little football team. Brentford 2, Arsenal 0. Have a fairy tale start for the Premier League newcomers. That is what keeps me going every time. We are a small club, but you don't feel so much like a small club now that we've been in the Premier League for three seasons. Because you get to see little Brentford, a bus stop in Hounslow, playing Liverpool, Man United, Man City. You win, lose or draw, but then you don't get that feeling very often. And going to the football gives you that feeling. My husband and I got married on quite a special date for us Fulham fans. We were in the playoff final at Wembley and being typical Fulham fans, we say we're kind of always believing, never expecting. So we booked our wedding and then got to the playoff final and it was on the same day. Got married in Fulham shirts, got up to Wembley and managed to have our celebration. I'd say Tom Kearney gave us probably the best wedding present we could have asked for. When Fulham got promoted into the Premiership, that was definitely a good memory. So we all went to Wembley. Yeah, that was the best day <laughs> ever, wasn't it? it was that was the best us. day ever. It was. The, the white wall. It was quite nerve-wracking because if we lost, we wouldn't be in the Prem. It's an occasion to save it, an atmosphere to save it, and hopefully a match to save it. These two clubs going up or staying in the championship changes the future massively. Well, yet in action, certainly making his presence felt there on Stephen Johansson. Yeah, it was stressful, especially when Adoy got sent off as well.
honest, I was born into football. I didn't really have a choice. My whole family's a Derby fans and started to go to watch Derby from a very young age with my dad and my granddad. It's just football, 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 football was all my childhood. One of my favourite games was when Derby went to Leeds, second leg of the playoffs. We were 2 0 down and we ended up winning 4 2, and that sent us into the playoff final. So that was incredibly exciting, and the scenes were amazing. Unforgettable that game. As a Derby fan, I try and stay away from big, important Derby games where I can just because I worry that I'll get too passionate. But I actually directed them when they got promoted to the championship, so that was fantastic. I just love what I do. I love football, and then that translates into a match director. So really, it doesn't feel like a job at all, because I just love doing what I do. What you see on your television is what I am helping get to air for the viewer at home. So I direct our camera operators in the ground to the various shots. I help coordinate with our replay coordinators, the replays which people see on their televisions. People call you like a conductor. You just bring all the shots together and then make the output happen. Just four miles separate these two clubs, but Fulham come here three places higher in the table and with the chance to still replicate their top ten finish of last season. We sit in the OB van in the car park often, so sadly we're not in the stadium, but you can definitely feel the buzz and the thrive from the fans. How much it means to everyone. Football is nothing without the fans. Yeah, there's a big rivalry between Brentford and Fulham. I think it was reignited in the last 10 years when we've been in the same division. But probably one of the best games I've ever been to was Brentford-Fulham when we first got promoted. We beat them at Craven Cottage. We celebrated so much, my brother passed out. I think the atmosphere will be buzzing today. This is a really important game. Obviously, we'd love to win. I mean, there's lots of West London clubs, but for some reason, it's Fulham that is the arch enemy. So today's match will definitely have more of a, an edge to it than other matches. So it's always a bit more tense when it's Fulham, because you always want to beat them. Home advantage, because People will love it when it's a Fulham match. It'll be louder than it normally is. As they say, the crowd of the 12th man. I think some of the chants that are more colourful, some of it's part of the game, I suppose, but I think some of it doesn't really need to be said. I think especially some of the chants that are racist, I just... I just don't understand how that's allowed, and I think that's still a long way to go before football is fully accepting of everyone, whether that's women, um, people of colour, uh, and even, like, homophobic chants and things. I just... It's just awful, and I think it really needs to be addressed. I obviously don't do any of the, like, anti-women, really crude... I absolutely hate that. I stand there and I'm like, can we stop now? Um, but if it's something that's, like... Nice. Absolutely. I've had things shouted at me, so there's obviously the get your out, etc. And you're like standing there, my dad's somewhere in the crowd behind me, and I'm standing there like, this is awkward. And it's just, it's not very nice to hear. There's other young children around. It can like make you feel really kind of awful, they don't do it against to, to men in the crowd, so why have you been singled out as a woman? I'd like to see an end to like the crude chanting. In terms of the lilies, one of the things that we're really useful for is if you've never been to a game before, it must be terrifying and I don't remember not knowing what to do and not feeling safe and not knowing anything. So the whole point of the meetups, we have to use the knowledge that we have to just help them get over maybe the nervousness with coming for the first time. 
One of the projects I've been working on is the policy around under fives coming into stadiums because there's a bit of disparity between stadiums and what the rules are. But we would love to work with all Premier League clubs that an under two should pay a minimal amount or a free ticket, ideally. We believe that if the parent can go, we want to make it available to them to go. Did you think you were going to get to more games together? Or yeah, do you think it's been... we moved. We bought Fat near my mum and dad for a reason. <laughs> I have brought Leo to one Fulham game. He's been to a couple of lower league games in Spain. And then yesterday I actually took him to a women's Champions League game in Barcelona against Chelsea. So that's probably his first big game. Other people have no interest in doing that. They're like, I want to go without the stress of children. Whereas for me, I want to have that experience with him and obviously depending on your childcare and whatever you don't know if you're able to go without them or whatever it's definitely a completely different experience when you go with a child you just notice your animation you notice the sound more when you're there with a child you notice the the atmosphere it's just different and obviously he's only one so i haven't yet got to experience properly the going together and them being you know excited although yesterday he absolutely loved the drums. He was loving this one particular fan that was being quite loud. He just kept staring at them. Starting to go to games now with my son, I can start to see what my dad was getting when he went with me. So I'm starting to get this new understanding of what it feels like to go on the parent side of it. I feel like it creates this whole new element that I'm really excited about as well. I think for me now as a 30 year old like having children is something that I'm beginning to think about and if we could make football stadiums a safer place for young children it's difficult to access football systemically as a woman it takes a long time to get onto the season ticket waiting list it takes a long time to get membership it takes a long time to be able to access away tickets but Female football fans are resilient, we're persistent. We've always been here, we will be here in the future. I'm a huge Brentford Bees supporter. And the reason why I started supporting Brentford was actually because of my 10-year-old son. He fell in love with football, so I thought, okay, where should I take him? Went to my first ever Premier League match here at the GTAC and fell in love with it. I've been here at every single home game since. I took Edward to football because my husband's got literally no interest in football whatsoever. He's Canadian and he likes cycling. Edward used to play football, like all the little boys play football. And I thought, well, if you like football, let's go and see a proper football match to see how professionals do it. And our local team is Brentford. And we loved it. And I think I loved it even more than he did. And so we've been going ever since. Having the football in common, particularly when you've you know, a mother of boys, means we always have something to talk about. And not just Brentford, it's like a grounder and it's not just them. I know enough to hold a conversation with anyone about football and it's such a, a leveler, like you could be with anyone, but if you ask them what their favorite football team is and they're into it, you can have a conversation and you've immediately got a connection. And I, I love that as well, particularly with men, because men don't think that they would look at me and they wouldn't think I know anything about football. And then you can start talking and it's like, oh yeah, and you just get that connection with someone. And it is, it's like a universal language of football. 2020, that was the year that we got into the first playoffs against Fulham. And I said to the boys, if Brentford win this playoff and we get into the Premier League, we're gonna get a dog and we're gonna call it Thomas Frank, he's the manager. Joe Bryan! Uh, and we lost, but we still got the dog and we still called him Thomas Frank. But he looks so much like him. It's, he's got the same hair and everything. It's really uncanny. <laughs> I've actually got into football through my mum, so I went with my mum for the first few matches. I always grew up watching Arsenal with my dad. I got my first season ticket the first year Blues got promoted into the Premier League. My dad would take me to the City Games and the Arsenal Games. My mum and dad got it me for my birthday and it was the best present. I've just renewed every season, so I think I'll have one for life now. I have a season ticket um, for the men and for the women. 
I think this will be my sixth season, if I can count now. I've had a season ticket for about eight or nine seasons now. I was able to get membership and then a season ticket. From when I was 16, it was me, my mum, my dad, my auntie, my uncle and all my cousins. Went to my first game at six, so 24 years. My first match, I was one years old. I normally go with my dad and brother, but sometimes my mum comes. My sister, Rhea, and our dad. My mum isn't into football at all, so she quite liked us being out of the house in the afternoon. I think I came home talking to my dad about Arsenal when he was gutted. It's brought me so close to my dad. Dad and sometimes my two brothers and mum. It's that sort of family unit getting buzzing every week for it. We only have two season tickets. Sometimes we're able to get more tickets. Sometimes I just take one child and it's amazing one-on-one -on -one time. Sometimes my husband and I go on date nights to the football match, but otherwise we switch around which child we take to different matches. We've been to several different away matches together as a family, and we really enjoy that. My husband and I managed to make it to most of the home games while I was still pregnant. Our daughter was born in July. We had a, a bit of time when the season ended before she was born. When she was a newborn was a bit more difficult for us to go. We ended up alternating who went. And, and that's something we're working on as part of the Fulham Lilies, is how to bring children back into the games and how to make families and female supporters feel more comfortable bringing their children so they don't feel excluded once they become parents. The majority of us are now either mums or are going to be mums, and that's a really nice kind of shared experience, especially for me now, becoming a new mum, to have that and to know what it's like from their experience of having kids and growing them up around the football world. I'm very excited, to be honest. Um, I can't wait to just indoctrinate my kid into Fulham and to get, give his, him his first kit, and I'm just very, very excited about that. It's such an important part of my life, so I'd like it to be an important part of his life as well. I wear team colours, like red or red shoes or red bag or badge or red jacket, but I don't wear the full kit. I don't like wearing polyester and it's just not my thing. If they made something that was fashionable, cool, I might wear it, but I just, I think you can just show your support just by wearing colours. So this is my scarf that I've always, I'm never gonna change this, it's filthy. This one has gone through the years, which is why it does not look white at all. <laughs> all my life, all my childhood, every Fulham shirt that I've ever been bought as a birthday present, for example, has never properly fitted me, because it's always been a men's fit. I haven't bought a Fulham shirt for a number of years because they just don't fit right. So this year we spoke to the club and we asked for women's fit and that's why I've got both the second and the third kit this year because they're in a women's fit and it just, they're so much more comfortable than the old style where it's considered a unisex but actually it's, it's very much a men's fit. So things like that now, I'm so pleased that young girls and young Fulham fans can have those experiences that I just didn't have growing up. Yeah, I reckon that was one of the first ones I wore, quite mini. Oh, this must be my 10th birthday. I'm not even gonna try and fit into that. This is my favorite all time Fulham shirt. This is an original 1991 season. So as you can see, it's got the old Fulham crest and no sponsor across the front. And there's a picture of me at Craven Cottage wearing my uh, favourite shirt. Still fitting this one, which is handy. <laughs> Scarf on, come on, Fulham. This is the oldest shirt that I've got. That's from the late 80s. So again, you can see the different badge there. Again, it's an original. Andy Johnson, he was a striker, scored some goals for us. Healy, Bullard, he was solid in the midfield. I actually got given this one from the club for 140 years. Scarf again. <laughs> this football, I don't know how long this has been going for. I mean, it's flat as anything. <laughs> and I will forever keep that even though it's not very white anymore. <laughs>
when Fulham got promoted into the Premiership, the club asked me to bring their trophy on. Oh, the trophy, yes. <laughs> the trophy was a good one. <laughs> started, it is in full swing here in West London. Because we had everyone sat around us saying, where's Mary? What about your scarf? Fulham had laid out new scarves for everybody. Well, my scarf I've always had. This Fulham FC women's captain, Mary Southgate, will bring out the prize, which was the reward for the greatest teams in the country many years ago. Still the prize. That was probably one of the best memories. Walk it on, try not to drop it. I kissed it on the way and then had to put it on the sand. Southgate as well. We weren't allowed, it was top secret, wasn't it? I know, so then they said, yeah. yeah. Oh, what's she doing there? Yeah. <laughs> Kissing the trophy. <laughs> they say she carry the trophies. Carry the trophy sensibly. <laughs> what? To the Johnny Haynes. And then sat. someone on Twitter said that girl thinks she's won the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was you because you're you're a fan. You're a fan, so to actually do that. I didn't really tell anybody about it, but my phone was popping off after because people just was watching the match and then saw it after on the telly. Very lucky to do that, actually. So yeah, it's it's a it's a big journey of it's a big family thing. Yeah, I put it on. So this is the scarf that we got when we won the championship in 2021-2022. This is a really fond memory of mine. This is my first away game as a as an 11, 12 year old. I went with my sister and my mum and dad. And I remember we uh, we were walking to the ground and we asked them off directions and they turned us in the complete wrong direction. And that's a bit of football rivalry for you there. I have had this probably since I was about 12, so 18 years old. This is my beloved autograph book. And of course, the first one is Dan Freeman, my, my favourite player. First, we have Lewis Bermorte, Harry Redknapp, Moritz Boltz, Stuart Pearce. Fulham versus Chester, 1st of March 1997, 3pm kickoff. It's a pound to get in for kids back then. Gordon Strachan, Jose Mourinho, Sammy Lee, Des Lynham. That was Peter Beardsley when he came to play for Fulham. So he was really well known. We never really had that many well known players. Sean Davis shirt, so I managed to get it signed by him a few years ago. Alan Goma, Papa Bupadiop, Johnny Haynes, Claudio Ranieri. He's always been my favourite player, and when I met him a few years ago, uh, my best friend who came with me really embarrassed me and said, Oh, you're the one she had a poster up on her wall of. <laughs> Chris Coleman, Sven Goran Eriksson, <laughs> and that is it. <laughs> Football's definitely a thing that really connects my family. My grandparents are Fulham, my parents are Fulham, my siblings are Fulham, and we've just always gone to the games. Thank you, Granny. Females in our family was me and my sister, <laughs> my gran and my mum. I remember we used to always wave, wave mum when we were leaving. <laughs> and then as we all got older, mum could come as well to the games because she obviously wanted to come. Met my husband, Roger. He happened to be a Fulham supporter. And our first match that we went to was Fulham against Huddersfield, 27th of February, 1982. Uh, this one says, a lifelong Fulham supporter travels home and away following both the men's and ladies. Oh, and Emmy's in this one as well. Welcome oh, to Emily. Hopefully Emmy will be at the match day with her mum, Laura. Hardcore FFC supporter. Oh, Laura, oh, making Laura. the big appearance. Yeah, coming out as a mascot. Focused, yeah. leading yeah. the team out. Big focus. Yeah. You're always wearing... Oh, gosh, always wearing that. Even the snowman's hat. got a full of hat on. <laughs> There's that one when it's your birthday and you've got your Fulham hat on. 
That's an old Fulham <laughs> hat, isn't it? How old were you there? Five, by the That must be it. the one I put on the snowman. Got a hat on there. Yeah, your Fulham hats. No, I was a bit like you. Like you always wear your Fulham cap. I used to wear my Fulham scarf when I oh, first yeah. started supporting what Fulham. What is this one? Yeah, that one there. That that's one there. Frankie. Yeah, very old. A bit different to the scarves we've got now, isn't it? And these. That is quite old. <laughs> <laughs> very old. Well, that is actually homemade. Probably Granny Pearl knitted it. As a player, I appreciate my parents coming to every single game, fans at the games. It's definitely growing, and it makes such a difference having that people there cheering, trying to inspire the young children. Like, it's really nice when we can see young players afterwards or young children, boys and girls, and they get really excited to see us. My favourite football memory has to be, without a doubt, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of people saying this, the Euro finals in 2022. I was there um, with my partner and to watch the number of people get excited, the number of women there, just to supporting our nation was incredible. I'm afraid to say when I left the ground, I was bawling, I was in floods of tears. I just couldn't believe that such an amazing thing had happened for the women's game where we were now finally gonna be at the forefront of everyone's minds. You know, football had come home. Some people don't always agree with that, that it has to be the men, but it's the women. The women brought it home. So to go and watch that number of people, watch our girls win, was just incredible. And as I say, the whole way home, I could not stop crying. It was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And I'm getting a bit choked up now thinking about it, because it was just the most amazing thing to see that. And for young girls growing up now, they have those role models that we struggled to see when we were younger. But now they have those models that they can look up to and say, that's who I want to be. I want to be the next Chloe Kelly. I want to be the next Lauren Hemp, the next Lucy Bronze. They now have those role models to look up to. Dreams turn into reality. I think that's one of the most inspiring things. We would have been inspired by so much growing up, but now, hopefully, there's a generation of people that will be inspired by us. I feel kind of jealous of the new generation of girls who can grow up with the Lionesses, because I think my life would be very different if there were women in football on the TV when I was younger, because that just wasn't the case when I was growing up. Great that women's football is getting the coverage that it is. And some of us are a little bit jealous because obviously we weren't able to play football at school because of the ban. There does seem to be an assumption that we've just started to watch football and be interested in football because of the women's game. This is the dream start for Chelsea. We've been around for a long time. You might not have seen us but we've definitely been there. I find there's a lot of one-upping and question asking and checking knowledge that men don't go through. I think in the future for female fans, I think it would be great to be more welcomed. I want female fans to, one, just be as involved as possible. I want as many women to be fans of football and understand the game and understand the passion behind it and feel comfortable watching it. Just including everyone, whether their gender or just their beliefs. Less of a stigmatism around the fact that women don't know the game as well or that we aren't comparable to the male sport. More of those iconic stadiums into the women's game I think will be amazing for, for women's football. If there's like a younger community that can grow up together, that is something that I missed out on. What are our goals at the Lilies? To maintain increasing access for football to everyone. Um, we want to support our men's team. We want to support our women's team. It's a very male-dominated kind of field and growing up as someone whose mother got her into the game, you know, for me it's a really important thing that other females feel as safe as I felt going to games in, in the past with my mum. We try and help women come to football matches and feel at home trying to increase uh, female fan visibility in the men's game and also try and increase uh, participation in our women's side. Especially in football, it's very male dominated, of course. So as a lady, you don't tend to have much of a voice on like a match day. It's this community of women and community of committed women and allies who are working to make football more accessible. As a group, the Lilies are there to ensure that we can be heard. We've kind of joined forces and we're listening to the problems that women are facing. We talk about this sisterhood and people kind of go, oh, the sisterhood, the girls, the women are kicking off again. But actually, we're really pushing for things to be different and more inclusive as a club.
We just want it to be more acceptable to see women at football, whether that's individuals going on their own or groups of women. We just want more people to be encouraged to attend football, to realise that it is a safe space for them. It would be great for more clubs to realise that on average 15% of season ticket holders are women. They deserve to have a voice and attending a football match as a woman is very different than attending it as a man. Even if it's simple things such as merchandise, changing merchandise makes it so much better for women to attend football. We sort of thought, as the Fulham Lilies, we were maybe quite late to the table and that there were lots of other groups out there. But there really isn't the Sheffield Wednesday, Garibaldi Girls, Women for the Lane, Women of Watford, um, Amber Bells. There aren't that many. Right. Everyone ready? Everyone here? Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's been amazing to see loads of other female fan groups pop up over the last couple of years. I know we, us as Lilies have played a role in, in helping some of the younger fan groups establish themselves. And it's amazing to be able to share our experiences with female fans of other clubs and, and help pave the way for them. I decided to set up Garibaldi Girls, which is the women's supporters group for Nottingham Forest, because I love football. I love Nottingham Forest. But I appreciate not everyone has been so lucky to have the support system that I do, where I can go to games and know that everyone around me will look after me because I'm with my Forest family. It was inspired by Fulham Lilies. That's when I got the idea at an EFL conference, actually, where they did a talk on Fulham Lilies. And I thought, that's just an incredible thing to do. So I thought to set up the Garibaldi Girls. I think if we can work with other football clubs, other female fan groups, to just create a nicer, safer, more comfortable environment at a football match, then that's one of the Lily's aims and that's what we're going to try and do. Doing what we do with the Lilies, coming along beforehand, meeting up with a group of like-minded women, it's so empowering. You come to realise that it's not a male space. Football is for everybody, it should be for everybody. There's nothing like a live game, it's fantastic. I still have to remind myself that um, it's okay, it's my place. It's nothing to do with my age, my sex. This is my team, this is my life. While I'm here, I'm breathing with the team. My heart's beating, I'm absolutely part of it. Yeah, let me tell you. Uh, drop bombs on them, oh she might yeah. Future never looks so bright Don't let them get you down or take your light Strong women, that's what champions look like We stood tall, put up a fight No fear, that's what champions look like So all my girls, make them look twice That's right, that's what champions look like